sugarcane is earmarked as one of the 14 strategic cash crops. It is on the government radar to improve livelihoods and inclusive growth for households and foster agro-industrialization. Indeed, the government is looking at sugarcane to expand the much-needed revenue for its infrastructural development. Sugarcane is not only seen as an avenue for livelihood enhancement in terms of providing the necessary employment, its benefits would spread to entire communities through proxies received from factories set up in these rural communities. Sugarcane is among the uh, very important priority commodities that have been identified in the agenda for government to, to agro-industrialize. Um, and the sugarcane is uh, grown in areas that are been identified with the, um, some challenges in terms of uh, uh, poverty. It has provided an opportunity for increased household incomes for some of our farmers, our community. And uh, some of these uh, sugar, I mean sugar, sugar mills have also tried to, co to, to contribute towards the development of the district, especially in the road sector. Even they have contributed to building some schools. And it has even also provided employment for some of our people, more especially the youth. Some of them are employed in the sugar factory, others are employed in the chambers. Somehow, there is some kind of employment in the district. Previously, our livelihood was really uh, good because at that time uh, it is like uh, we used to grow sugar canes and uh, we would harvest them by the age of around 14-15 months we would be harvesting. So we would know that almost every year you are harvesting and that would be income which is coming into the, 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 the home annually. And yes, Uganda has seen a jump in sugarcane production. This has come as a result of more land being tilled than improvement in production methods. And paradoxically, in areas where it is grown, sugarcane's sustainable growth is under threat. It is now being looked at as a source of household poverty, as opposed to being a redeemer. The development that uh, the inclusive growth and development that was expected by by the developers and the, the government are, are not forthcoming. After encouraging us to grow sugar canes, we did uh, respond to their call, but at the time when we are supposed to benefit, we are now only suffering. The, the price has gone down because the mirror decides what to give a farmer. Then the time for car harvesting also takes so much time like about four, three and a half years, the cane is still in the field. People are now dying of poverty because they have started borrowing from institutions, from banks. You find yourself selling off your land, you find yourself running away, and people are dying of poverty. So what is wrong? Sugarcane in Uganda is majorly grown in four regions, Busoga, Unyoro, Uganda, and recently Achole. Busoga, has the biggest number of sugarcane mills and huge acreage of sugarcane, making use of its fertile soil around Lake Victoria and Lake Choga, coupled with good rains. Busoga contributes 35% of the sugarcane milling capacity of Uganda. It is followed by Central Uganda at 27%, Western at 25%, and Northern at 12%. However, the persistent poverty in Busoga continues to raise questions whether cane cultivation is benefiting farmers. Uganda Bureau of Statistics 2020 figures show that Busoga has 1.2 million poor persons, of whom a quarter of a million suffer household food insecurity. Uh, overall, it is second uh, in terms of poverty, but also it contributes the biggest percentage of poor in the country. So there were questions then, why? Why Busoga, for example? And then it started uh, coming up that, yes, it could be that sugarcane is causing all that. Economic Policy Research Center, in partnership with Innovation Lab for Food Security Policy, Research, Capacity and Influence, with support from United States Agency for International Development, is undertaking a study to assess the sugarcane sector in Uganda. The three initiatives seeks to understand the intricacies between the farmers, millers and their communities in general. 
The lessons will inform recommendations that will be used by the government, communities and millers to improve operations in the industry. We are investigating uh, the issue of sugarcane and then around uh, uh, governance structures and also we are looking at issues that relate to how the industry should be, um, be um, put on a sustainable path. It is already clear there has been increased sugarcane growing, largely driven by the licensing of small mills, especially in Busoga sub-region. These small mills did not have nucleus estates and therefore they rely entirely on outgrower schemes. I can give an example for Mayuki. Mayuki doesn't have land, doesn't have transport, doesn't have labor, but we are in, in partnership. But in our partnership, he has failed to recognize that we are in partnership. Indians think they are just helping us. These factories are now crowded in almost the same area. You find that it is the same people who are growing sugar canes, and that has caused us some bit of misery. Our children are not getting uh, all the meals that they are supposed to get. Would the increased sugar growing and milling imply better incomes, reduce poverty, an increase in food security for the communities? We have grown more sugar cane. The Indians told us that you grow more sugar cane, not knowing that they will not take the sugar cane. Even the factories right now cannot take the cane we have. Whether you give them free, you say my cane is here, please, when are you coming to take? They will not take. The permit nightmare. So what are permits? A permit is a document that allows a farmer to harvest and supply the sugar cane to the miller. Permit, yaba permit, okusoka, oba mpaga ano, na komova mumwa kagwe neguno, na abie soniga. Paka enafuni obusungu, ebika adobi no na akoba le kambi gave babisage mu baba tola ku ndoche mu mvue kubiye bika do male gali mu bana ata mu maido basoya people are now starving everywhere not only in ruka but all the districts around madivwani are suffering who change lira kuba kati jiringe mtu ya kuwe chindu na achizira kati go chitwalewa Twebuza bwebuza kiche kya tu kangate ruyeda twai kutambula bulunji yatuja kitunda bweru ndio baba tuwe muze batuwa ate kirikoloni Olusomba biwo uka konga byakula nibikola nibikola nibikala nibifuka mwenku kati bino bilaba ogero labanti ebenda byakala kati ero tamako butemi no teka wano nibatwala nku this is a failed deal. It's a failed deal. Let them get back to square one. Uh, in 1997, sugar canes were cut down and burnt by many farmers when there was a price fall and lack of market. The same thing can be done here and farmers can now learn lessons to change business. And as they change business, they should put emphasis on food security. There is no household which prospers without food. Lack of a clear path to sell their cane is leading the farmers into poverty. Many are disengaging. <laughs> Uprooting for other products, for other groups. Omulanga go ifezira go ano kuile. To the extent in kebi kado to dikubi fumbira, bu fumbira se awe no. To tandi se no kubi gaba. We are determined to get our family to a 
kind of tubanga it is which to send the Kusanga party. Yet some are burning it and using the cane as firewood. The cane is overgrown and drying. There are stockpiles and stockpiles of unharvested and unsold sugarcane. Individuals that rent out their land for sugarcane growing have not been spared the date cycle and many have ended up selling the land to the people who initially rented it. I can't hide it out. Me, I hire a lot of land in Rubok. But I found people who are willing to, to give it to me. And I hired the land six years. Me, after hiring the land, I come back to Ginger. I just go to harvest. So what does it mean? They should leave some land for their food crops too. If the land is small, why don't you use it yourself? So this man who has the money comes and exploits him and says, I'm, you, I'm hiring your land. And for about seven years, this poor man is just an onlooker. On his, in fact, many times these people even become laborers, they become workers on their own what? land. There is also a development which is unwanted of speculators who are gaining access to the permits. These are perceived to be powerful politicians, high-ranking army and police officers, or their cronies. They don't buy sugarcane in metric tons, they buy fields. Ba meja, bara PC, naba fuzibene, kairi ba bingiri demu ebiyo ebiye bikado, ba tumala kuifeno, obuereso abali miaba wansi. Abantu abatono, abatali miya na bikado, ba likuva mu state house. Parliament, different ministries, as they come to Kakira, they influence Madifani. And above. Now that has implication. It means that what the farmer used to get before is now shared between the farmers and middlemen. But two, you cut that feedback mechanism that pre-existed, that a meal is working directly with the farmer, they are providing support, they know their needs, and then they also work accordingly. But now with the middleman, you know, you have a curtain between farmers and, uh, and millers. Some farmers have borrowed to finance cane growing. The vast majority of them, however, have received financing from the millers. If the mill cannot take the cane, the farmers are stuck. The loans continue to accrue interest. The mills cash in on that. But the game is giving us the boat loan here, but you end up at young as a one gets a pocket cane de raco. Well, what I'm to all asset, or my name Yakis at the Kamuka de Kamu Pras. But by the way, is that loan here? Name it a pocket of what permit? Never loan here was a galley chart umbrella. Catch over the bobo. Catch over the go for an interest. I think the war was just for interest. Over in Yongela, we saw that we were not going to be able to pay for the land. Millers like Kinyara have acquired new land and embarked on a cane-growing expansion campaign of the nucleus estate. They are harvesting their own cane and moving towards self-reliance. Already, Kinyara is said to consume only 40% from the outgrower scheme. The rest comes from the nucleus estate. The outgrowth system, which wasn't the lifeline of Kinyara sugar, has suffered and will soon be extinct, unless the miller expands its capacity or new mills are licensed in the area. The general feeling is that the outgrower farmers are expandable. A number of uh, farms have been opened up uh, by the miller, which are now under crop. We have Chiriana Ranch, it used to be a government ranch where they would rear uh, cattle but it has now been taken over, over about 200 square kilometers. Then the miller has also moved out to hire land from private individuals. 
to grow his own cane. The regulatory framework points out challenges that need to be addressed. The National Sugar Policy of 2010 puts out policies for a sustainable sugar industry. And consequently, a law, the Sugar Act 2020, lays out clear guidelines for sustainable development of the sugar industry. Because if there is a sugar act, why is it not functional? That's the first word. I call upon the government to, to make the sugar act so that whatever is in the sugar act it becomes eh, functional. Uh, the institutional challenges that would be uh, sorted out by the, uh, the governing body if it was in place, the sugar board, for example, like the issue of farmers are not accessing permits. The mirror must be told by government that this should be done. And that is the body to be, to be, to be, to be. If the body is implemented, it will give orders. Each mill must have a cooperative because the miller will know it. And if he is pretending, the, the body will direct. We thought that once we, are, we organize ourselves in a kind of an association, then we shall have one voice. That will be our, our mouthpiece as far as our demands and the problems are concerned, challenges. The farmers' association will be a bridge between the farmers and then the mirror. A sneak peek into the findings paints a disturbing picture of an industry struggling to stay on course.